Funding for this program is brought to you by the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. So restoration and remediation are different activities we take to restore an ecosystem. Um, remediation is a technique that we use to address contamination. And when we do remediation, there are a couple of common options. Um, one, if it's in the sediment, which is often the case in the St. Louis River, is to simply remove the sediment. And so they'll use a, some sort of dredging material to just simply take it away. And then it gets um, disposed of in a special facility that can handle uh, contaminated sediments. In cases where it's not high enough that you could touch it, but it does accumulate enough that it's a concern in other ways, the term is called capping, where we basically apply a material to make sure it can never get exposed to the environment ever again. Capping is often used. Another technique is to apply um, some kind of activated compound that will lock up that chemical so that nothing else can access it. And so those are the really the three main techniques, dredging, capping, and then um, adding an activated compound um, to basically lock it up in place. The U.S. Steel Spirit Lake Project is a huge remediation effort currently taking place with an estimated $75 million price tag. The plant used iron ore from the Iron Range to make steel, and in the process released a variety of pollutants for decades into the water, and crews are working to bring this section of the estuary back to a healthy state. The U.S. Steel plant was built in the early 1900s. The U.S. Steel plant operated through the late 1970s. It was shuttered and officially closed in 1981. They knew then they had a problem. I mean, it had long been recognized that that facility, the wastes on site, had contributed to pollution in the river. And so by 1984, the state of Minnesota had listed it um, under the Superfund program, which is a federal program to identify contaminated sites that need to be cleaned up um, because they are a major source of pollution. The hard thing to imagine is that there is a large amount of land along the bend in the river. It looks like a river delta. That river delta was not there originally. In, 19, in the early 1900s, that was not there. Those materials all came off the land. Um, and when they came off the land, they carried the contaminants with them. It's hard to imagine excavating the entire, you know, delta of material, but that's what we're talking about in terms of the cleanup. It's an extensive project. The other aquatic portion of it that's received a lot of attention is on the south end, um, you know, so closer to the, the Fond du Lac Dam, an area called Wire Mill Creek, um, which is also highly contaminated. Those are the main areas that require work underwater. There's also plans in place to address the contamination on land um, in the main of the site um, that's remaining. There are plans in place to address the contamination in the river, but as of today, uh, we don't know when that might occur. There's been ongoing discussions, there's been back and forth on plans, but the reality is we have yet to come up with an agreeable plan with sufficient funding to, to address the contamination in the river. So the, the cleanups in the St. Louis River are among the largest being undertaken in the Great Lakes. For this reason, the environmental managers and the scientists are really invested in making sure we get the characterization of the site accurate and that the cleanup that we're doing is effective. And so we do that by partnering from the very beginning. Here is the ecological risk. Here is the human health risk. Here's how much, and here's where it is. That's the scientist's role. The managers then work together, um, both, you know, they could be from um, the tribe or the state or the federal government. They're often all working together as a partnership. They say, well, here's what we need to do. And then 
will come up with that plan. And then the scientists will work with them to come up with what we call a monitoring plan. They'll take data um, after the project and probably for many years after the project, because it takes many years to get a successful response um, to tell the managers if those goals are being met. And of course, if those goals are not being met, um, then we need to come up with a plan to figure out how we get to where we wanna be. Um, and if those goals are being met, that's great. That's great news. It means that the, the, the strategy we undertook was successful and we've addressed the, the environmental concerns we had. Um, and so these partnerships are very common on the river and really critical, to making sure we're doing the job well. There's always some uncertainty about it. You, you have some contamination that's there and it's, it's hard to predict exactly how that contamination is going to move around or affect things down upstream or downstream from it. But we're trying to, in some ways, um, predict how, uh, how bad the effects will be from the contaminants that are present, thereby setting an appropriate limit to say, you should clean up to this level. And once it's below this level, then it probably won't have adverse impacts in the future. Programming is supported by Western Lake Superior Sanitary District, innovating solutions and reducing mercury pollution in the St. Louis River through research and community programs. Online at WLSSD.com.